Welcome back, my beautiful friends. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Up in just a few minutes in our innovation and tech segment brought to us by Call Soames, we have our returning contributor, Paul Caldwell, and his good friend, Dan Reichman, CTO of Original Digital Corporation. Today, we're discussing whether there is a paradox between bank tech and DeFi. And the bigger question is, can we integrate both systems into our digital world and propel bank tech? into Web 3.0 successfully. Now, the growing dominance of centralized entities over the internet and users' personal data has resulted in the need for the internet's decentralization. And although the concept of a Web 3 has been around for almost a decade, it's now that people have started to realize the importance of a decentralized web ecosystem. Now, Web 3 stands to resolve issues associated with today's dominantly centralized web. And over the past few decades, Payment processing giants like MasterCard and Visa have actively explored Web3 opportunities. In fact, both companies announced partnerships with cryptocurrency wallets and exchanges, setting precedents and signaling a green light for industry enthusiasts. The Q4 2021 quarter saw $2.5 billion in payments made with crypto-connected Visa cards. Even in its current developmental stage, Web3, by virtue of decentralization, ensures that payments are safer, simpler and smarter. Payments are peer-to-peer, -peer, borderless, and support multiple tokens and blockchains. Now, to set it all straight, you need to know about something called ISO 20022, an open global standard for financial information. It creates a common language for payments worldwide. And companies like Original Digital get this. They've built a platform over the past five years already designed to overlay these rapidly integrating standardized messaging formats. ODC's OG Pay platform, for one, is already fully integrated with Natcha and already provides ACH services. Now, Natcha manages the development, administration, and governance of the ACH network, which is the backbone for the electronic movement of money and data in the United States. Essentially, they're an association for the payments industry. And here to chat some more are my experts at hand. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Hello, Zen. Hi, Zen. Paul, nice to have you back. All right, Paul, what does all of this mean to the consumer or the business wanting to make seamless payments globally? Uh, should they be considering more of a centralized solution with a traditional bank or more of a DeFi solution on a blockchain using a Web3 type solution? Or is it both? Please explain. Zen, it's both. I mean, at, at the end of it all, it's really about service and it's really about the uh, businesses and consumers getting their needs met. So when it comes down to the simple, that just that simple value, um, it's, it's really both. And what you find with um, ISO um, 222 is that you'll, you'll see a, an integration, more of an integration of the central bank um, uh, transfer facilities. You're going to see this singular messaging platform um, between these. So everything's everything's domestic, everything's local when it comes to banking, when it comes to moving money or when it comes to payments. Um, the reason the big fintech or the big the big companies in in in, uh, for example, merchant services like a, a Pfizer, for example, don't seem to be very concerned about a you know crypto mastercard kind of payments firm is, is they realize that all of the DeFi or the fintech solutions that are out there only oriented towards DeFi are actually claiming to disrupt the very businesses that they rely on to be in business and so it's a it is a bit of a paradox from that perspective but the, at the end of it it's really both because the standards around the world are improving as well the fed now um, that is that exists right now, um, instant ACH, um, that, which is it exists right now. But what doesn't exist right now is real time ACH, as we call it, and that comes on board middle of the year next year. And as you mentioned, the OG Pay platform that Dan and his team um, oversee at ODC have that already considered because these messaging platforms and these technologies need these overlays so the companies that are going to create the overlays to use all of that technology integrated that and integrating that on the back end with things like blockchain and crypto and real-time settlements um, are, are going to be the ones in our bet that that win the day going forward 
Yeah, and globally, Paul, it's, it's very true because there's an increase in the diversity of consumer payment uh, preferences going way beyond credit cards. Uh, digital mobile wallets are rising really in popularity among consumers and in second and third tier markets. Really, if you look, look, they're looking to really overtake the e-com payments market share and more and more mature consumer markets around the world are starting to really integrate new ideas with long-standing traditional norms. And this trend is truly rapidly flowing into the payment space. We're seeing it now in real time. Dan, welcome to the show. Thank you, Sam. So Dan, super apps, uh, Paul and I were talking about this. They house this variety of, of digital services from social interactions and shopping to delivery, uh, ride hailing and payments with a single app, right? So Dan, yes. if this payments phenomena of dispelling uh, the paradox between centralized and decentralized and having it all integrated, is this the reason the OG Pay app is a sort of super app with account holders in so many countries? Yeah, I mean, we're basically providing all the services that you already mentioned and packaging the, the payments and, as you said, payments for, for services, payments for goods, in addition to holding uh, and buying cryptocurrencies or maybe making money transfers. So it's really a super app, if you, as you said, it's, it's a banking services and payment services all rolled into one app. And, and Paul, interestingly enough, because as people, Paul and I talk about this all the time, Dan, but as people live more of their lives online, the, the demand for instant gratification and convenience skyrockets, and they want a full array of financial services available on their phone and instant transactions 24 hours a day, seven days a week, hence the rise of fintech and, and digital first companies and blockchain technology. Paul, where do blockchain cryptocurrencies and nationalized currency tokens show up in all of this with, with more and more retailers accepting cryptocurrencies globally? That's a great question, Zen. I, I think the, uh, a, a lot of people make a mistake on these things because they look at them separately. I like to keep in my own mind separately. I, I know it all ultimately culminate, you know, it culminates at the apex of fintech, but I like to separate bank tech because there's a lot more going on in, in, in banking technology than most people or the media covers or most people would, would care about, but there is a lot going on there. And I think that when you, when you realize that, it's important to look at the highest best use of each of these things, like cryptocurrencies. You see these nationalized currency tokens coming on board from countries actually issuing their own tokens. Um, and I think we're gonna see more and more of that show up as, as the national, uh, the governments uh, nationalize these kinds of things and try to create a federated environment around uh, sort of with um, but with distributed data. So it's like a, it's, it's like a federated platforms developing like we just talked about with the new ISO standard um, with dis distributed data, distributed payments, distributed money that moves digitally. And we as we know, cryptocurrencies today, for example, that's that's one aspect of it. And we see more retailers, more and more retailers are starting to accept uh, cryptocurrencies. And that's but that's been a very long time adoption. It's not just popping up now. It's it's been a conversation for years and years. Um, and I think it's going to be a conversation for years to come as standardization becomes more the play. And through standardization, you can then get an environment that also is more secure. Consumer protection is a very important aspect here. Um, and protected payments from business to business as well with the security uh, and, and all of that surety that needs to be built into those payments. So I, I think people just make that mistake and it's important to look for the um, higher value proposition from each one um, because that, that will help them come together at, at the places where value gets created. Yeah, very true. And, and the lack of bureaucracy makes Web3 payments um, uh, you know, much quicker, so to speak, while traditional Web 2 payments might take days to settle, payments on the blockchain are settled within minutes or even seconds. And international transfers are also much easier under a Web 3 payment system, removing that need for complex currency conversions and expensive, you know, um, remittance fees. So just as in uh, the OG Pay has something very unique in the sense where Web 
it combines and merges both worlds very, very nicely. But in the sense, Web3 payments are our form of DeFi. They secure ledgers to process the moving of money and seek to combat the control of large financial institutions such as banks, which often require fees and the submitting of data in exchange for their services. So traditional e-com points of sale and real-time payment methods are rapidly uh, blending at this point. Dan, how does the OG Pay app support both consumers and merchants in both Web 2 and 3 simultaneously? Well, I mean, we are we have uh, essentially gateways to all traditional banking services. At the same time, we have gateways to the crypto world, right? So you can, you know, you can buy Bitcoin and, and fund it with your credit card. And then you can use that Bitcoin and use OG Pay to pay for goods and services as well. So we kind of go both ways. In real time. In real time, correct. Yeah. So, Paul, in the meantime, uh, growing numbers of dissatisfied uh, crypto consumers are likely to try their luck um, filing chargebacks against exchanges with their credit card issuer. We've talked about this in the past. Hitting the exchanges undermines the infrastructure on which Web3 is being built. Should we expect professional chargeback mitigation to play an important role as the crypto market deepens and Web3.0 becomes a reality? Yes, I think so. I, th I think that has to happen. I mean, if if someone buys a pair of tennis shoes at a at a sporting goods shop on a Friday and they don't like them and they bought them with their cryptocurrency card, uh, Mastercard or Visa card, for example, and then they want to return them on Monday, but the token that they use, the cryptocurrency, the coin that they use, Bitcoin, let's say, um, has a move up or down, um, and then they return this product. Well, the merchant still, the consumer needs to get their money back. The the merchant needs to get their money back, and um, from you know they they need to provide the money back, and then they need to get it back. So from the from the manufacturer, or they have to restock it. There is a ton of technology that's built in there for return merchandise authorizing and things like that. So there's a there's a bunch that has to get talked about at that retail level, um, and I think consumers too are episodic in their thinking that when they see in the media, Bitcoin's down this much or Ethereum's down that much, um, that's for coin trading. That's almost like the FX trader, right? That's, that's almost like a currency trader mentality. What we're talking about here is real commerce globally in real time. It's why what Dan and his team have put together with OG Pay is so impressive, is that you can literally keep your tokens, keep your coins, and then they have this liquidity provisioning technology that they that they invented that allows for you to then just go instantly sell some of your tokens, get complete transaction history verification, instant settlement onto your card and go buy the go buy those same tennis shoes with your Visa card. But it wasn't a current it wasn't a crypto transaction. It was a currency based transaction. Still instant. Go. Still in real yep. time. In and real that's time. The, that's the magic of these of these new super app technologies that you're going to see, I think, coming more and more to the forefront. OG Page is, Dan and his team, they've just been working with OG yeah. Page building it out for like four years, so they're ahead of the curve. Yeah, okay, we have about a minute and a half left. Dan, uh, preference diversity is the name of the game going forward. Onboarding funds and cash out features are key to overall success for any consumer mobile wallet solution. Why are these wallets on the rise? Why do you think? Well, especially in the third world countries where banking services are not as easily accessible, that I think what makes the super app type of services are very attractive. Also access to currencies that are not necessarily or medium, if you will, not necessarily subject to the same inflation you would see in the third world countries also makes it very attractive. So the combination of instant service, ability to kind of control your savings, right? And moving money in and out makes it very, very interesting, I think, for everyone. Oh, yeah, especially for the 1.7 billion people in this world that are unbanked and or underbanked. Uh, this is really solving real world issues and really paving the way out of poverty in some respects. But we are out of time. Uh, I want to just thank both of you for coming on and sharing light on fintech and banking and really where we're headed in Web 3.0. Paul, thank you so much. Dan, it was a pleasure. Thank you, Zen.
My pleasure, Zed. Web 3.0 is supposed to take control of the internet from big tech. The key is that you become the owner of your data and not let the data aggregators gain control of it and the social media giants. That's what crypto enthusiasts are calling self-sovereign identity. That was our innovation and tech segment brought to us by Caldwell Soames. That was Dan Reekman, CTO of Original Digital Corporation and Paul Caldwell, Chairman and CEO of Caldwell Soames. Head to OGPay.com and definitely check out ODC.inc. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York, iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this. A Moment of Zen is brought to you by Caldwell Soames Incorporated. Investing globally in transformative businesses like Original Digital Corporation or ODC, ODC develops advanced consumer and commercial fintech solutions such as OGPay, which will transform the way you manage your money. From sending and receiving money globally for free, paying for goods and services in person and online, pay bills, buy and sell digital currencies, all while earning interest. OGPay is easy to set up, FDIC insured, and your information is secured. Check out OGPay.com. Com. 